Nowadays, uh, most of you probably uh, store your data remotely, uh, which means that you have to somehow keep private. Um, and I'm gonna present you a solution which is uh, designed to keep your privacy. But let's uh, first start uh, from the needs. Uh, well, let's continue. Um, what do we need to keep private is that uh, we have to uh, rely only on ourselves, basically. Um, you can't store your data unencrypted somewhere where especially you don't know where it can be stored on what servers and what more. Um, Benjamin Franklin said that uh, three can keep a secret uh, when two of them are dead. And this sentence is really, um, really up to date. And it, for me, this means that I have to support client-side encryption where, whenever I store my data remotely. Uh, to complete the privacy, I also have to pro provide the secure transfer, which nowadays is uh, rather a standard, and uh, provide a fault tolerance in order to uh, keep my data safe uh, if something goes bad. But also, what I really appreciate is that I don't want to spend too much time on doing this. I don't want to encrypt each of every file I have. Uh, I don't want to use too many tools for it. So there comes SXFS, which is designed to keep your data private and keep it all easy. Uh, SXFS is uh, encrypted fuse-based file system mapping to SX remote uh, distributed object storage. Um, and it's open source, so everyone can use it. Uh, so let's take a look how, how does it work. Uh, from the user perspective, uh, you have to deal with uh, Fuse API, uh, which means that uh, the user will only have to uh, use this uh, the software as a regular local file system, which means that you don't really have to care about what you are doing. You just copy a file uh, remove it, uh, and so on. Uh, SXFS supports, um, works as a mapping to remote, uh, file, uh, remote objects, uh, so the file is mapped to the object stored in the cluster, and uh, the SXFS supports uh, task queuing and transfer resumes, which uh, make it, uh, well, uh, quite robust when you re-upload your data or uh, something like this. Uh, from the data transfer perspective, um, file, uh, files are uh, um, split into same sized blocks, which means that uh, it works like any other usual uh, distributed storage system, basically. And so uh, the blocks are distributed fairly over the cluster nodes, which means that uh, the more nodes you have, the less, uh, the less time you spend on the, on the data transfer because you have parallel block transfers support. And uh, thanks to the consistent hashing, uh, all your data is fairly distributed over cluster nodes. And of course, this, uh, this all comes with uh, fully client-side encryption. Uh, how does this client-side encryption work? It is just based on the standard algorithms. Um, blocks are encrypted with uh, AS256 in CBC mode, and uh, they are also connected with um, HMAC uh, code for uh, integrity checks, and uh, what is, what is uh, also needed for, for this encryption to be secure is that uh, the duplication is only on the file level. So when you have your file split into blocks, it is, uh, those blocks are connected with each other by uh, using the IV, which means that uh, when you have changed, uh, for example, one last block of the file, the whole file needs to be re-uploaded. This is because uh, uh, doing uh, such a, uh, the duplication on the block level for encrypted data would uh, leak some information on, on the file structure. And as a bonus, you can uh, also encrypt your file names and file sizes to well, be much more, um, uh, let's say, pedantic in this, in, uh, in this encryption scheme. So uh, if any cluster user had access to your uh, files, files listing, it can no longer um, deduce what, what are the files, basically. 
Now I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, or maybe summarize the architecture of, or as, of SXFS. On the right hand side you can see client uh, laptops. Uh, these are uh, Linux machines basically on this picture, but you can also use uh, mobile phones and stuff for it. Uh, but the box uh, clients use Fuse API, which deals with AS256 filter. And the filter uh, is designed to just encrypt your uh, data blocks, which will go through uh, standard HTTPS over standard HTTP uh, for, for free uh, ports doing this uh, whole solution firewall friendly and the uh, data is stored on the SX server. If you have a need to provide fault tolerance and data replication, you can easily add more nodes to the cluster and then uh, <coughs> you have uh, basically more security of your data. Uh, so let's get started. How can you use SXFS? Uh, it is already a part of a couple of common distributions. It is a part of Fedora, Debian, and we have an e-build for Gentoo system. Uh, we plan to become a part of uh, CentOS SIG and uh, Mac OS X via Mac OS ports. How do you install it? It's fairly easy. On Yum-based systems, you just install Skylabel-SX. On Debian-based, uh, you install SX package. On Gentoo, you uh, install SX from the net-misc, which is fairly easy. If you want to download sources and try it uh, on your own, uh, here you have a couple of dependencies uh, you, which you have to fulfill. And then you just have to uh, download the sources and untar them and configure make make install. Uh, it's fairly easy, known for each of you. Uh, so in order to, to work with your, uh, with your data securely, you have to have some server. Uh, the setup of the server is uh, very easy. It's one command, and it's an interactive script which will guide you through, through the needed information. And for most of the questions, you just have to hit enter, uh, because it, it defines the default answers for the questions. As you can see, you, you, you define uh, storage where your data will be placed, size of the storage, IP address, and so on. In order to make this uh, solution work uh, from the, uh, for the client, you have to make a user on the storage, which will be authenticated, and uh, create a volume for this user. Uh, you have to use dash F AS256 flag, which will enable the encryption on the volume. Um, we have to enable encryption on the whole volume uh, in order to make our uh, other clients uh, work uh, the same way. So they are informed that there is an AS encryption working. Um, and that's it from the server side. When it comes to the client setup, it is also fairly easy. First, you need to SX init to the cluster. Um, there is an example, URI, which was previously used for making the cluster. So it is, it is the same. And after you <coughs> After you uh, initialize to the cluster, the configuration of the connections and uh, everything what is needed to store your data there will be saved. Um, then you can easily mount your Fuse-based file system uh, using SXFS command uh, mount, or uh, even you can just put the line in the um, FSTAP file. Uh, what is also a nice feature is the use queues flag. It enables um, queuing the tasks on the client side, um, which are by default uh, disabled. Uh, the queues uh, implementation delays the transfers, uh, so your commands uh, end up quickly. But then there is a, a, batch, a batch of synchronization uh, commands sent to the server, which uh, in the end uh, should improve a little bit your transfer speeds. So if you liked SXFS, uh, we have also support for other um, platforms. Uh, well, Android platform does not have a uh, Fuse implementation, but it, is, it works very similar. Uh, of course, we are on Linux. Uh, we are planning to, to have an iOS application. It is already in, in the App Store, but it is uh, going through the cosmetic bug fixing right now. So it should be available really soon. And if you, if you have somebody in your family who uses Windows, uh, 
there is a client too. <laughs> so uh, to summarize, uh, if you are uh, the guy who cares about your privacy, you probably have something to say. Uh, so I hope that I made clear how does this tool work, and I hope that you are among those guys who will give a try to SXFS. Thank you very much. And at this point, I would like to acknowledge Jakub Hyłkowski, who is the main developer of SXFS, but he's not uh, here with me. So uh, thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. <laughs> so we have time for a couple of questions. OK, let's just start. Hello. What can you tell me about failure tolerance? So, if, for example, if the network connection breaks down or the hard drive has an error where the files are stored, uh, do I have to uh, worry about all my data that's broken then? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the server keeps your data replicated. So when, uh, for example, the server side dies, uh, your part of your data, well, at least some replicas should be there. So uh, in, in case you uploaded some of the data and your connection failed, uh, you will have a reservation for your data, which uh, un well, for some time uh, your data will be there un undeleted, so we can re-upload it again. Uh, when your connection dies, uh, well, after, after your file was uploaded, you of course don't have a problem. Uh, any other questions? There is you said that it's available under the GPL v2. Um, would you consider making it available under the GPL v2 or later? Uh, currently, currently not. But uh, currently not. But uh, yeah, that's that, that's our license. How do we say it? So no. Here we go. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, you were saying that you are uh, delaying syncing uh, data to the server. Yeah. What about uh, power loss at bef uh, before uh, sync? What uh, happens with user data? Uh, yeah, this means that uh, SXFS won't be able uh, data to the server, of course. Uh, so the first of all, that is that is why this uh, flag is disabled by default. Uh, I'm speaking about use flags. This saves you the fault failure handling, basically. When you uh, fail to upload your data just in time, uh, there is no, no, not a problem because you have error. Uh, but when it happens when the operation is delayed, uh, SXFS basically stores the data on uh, backup DIR. Uh, so until it is uh, fully uh, pushed to the server, it will be stored locally. OK, we have time for a couple, maybe two more questions. Can, hi. Um, can I have Nginx as a remote proxy be, be um, in front of the S6 uh, uh, server? Uh, well, our server is basically based on Nginx, so we, we, we use it, basically. OK. It's, it's just a part of, of the okay. demo. On the server side, do you have uh, more backends? I mean, uh, do you show an example to mount the volume? But this volume can be anything, or uh, has to be uh, no, the volume is is just um, well, it's just a, um, a container of your data, which is uh, is like a partition in your computer. It it just separates uh, data from the other users. Uh, so well, it's it's not a, a hard a hardware uh, like uh, a partitioning. It's just logic. Mm -hmm. With an SFX server in front of it, so I have multiple backends where I can store information. We and SFX does the job. Uh, no, SXFS works with SX uh, storage. It, it uses the API of SX. Okay. Uh, the last question. Uh, is there any uh, locking system to uh, prevent uh, making data inconsistent? Uh, when there is uh, distributed access. And locking system in terms of uh, different users from these different computers. Uh, yeah, basically uh, it works uh, on, a, on a basis of uh, data revisioning. So when you uh, happen to upload the same file twice, 
or maybe a little bit changed file, uh, when you have enabled uh, data um, revisioning on your volume, which was uh, enabled by dash m flag, uh, the two examples of your file will be stored there. So uh, in terms of uh, remote locking, no, there is, there is just a uh, who's first uh, then wins. Okay, let's thank Robert again. Thank you very much. Okay, great.